Charles Bartholomew, aka Chuck Bass, is one of the leading characters in Gossip Girl, known as the Upper East Side's resident playboy. Chuck's magnetic presence leaves an indelible mark on the fashion-forward world he inhabits. With his impeccable style and undeniable daring charm, he captivates friends and foes alike, weaving a web of intrigue that keeps us all on the edge of our seats to see what he will do and what he will wear next. This visual tale of his metamorphosis, from the bad boy you love to hate, into a refined gentleman you hate to love. Hi everyone, how are we doing today? I hope we're all good and having a wonderful day. If you're new, welcome. My name is Michelle and this is The Shade Gluk, where we discuss fashion on a deeper level through the use of art, diary, and social sciences. So you may bring them together in order to develop your true personal style that embraces you as a unique individual. And through fashion past your traditional service levels, take note because there's so much more than meets the eye. If this sounds good to you, please subscribe. Or if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me here again today for discussion all about Chuck Bass's style from the hit TV show Gossip Girl. In analysis, we're going to be looking into the styling techniques that create that signature Chuck Bass look and how he retains his signature, as well as his style evolution throughout the course of the show, going from this very juvenile flamboyant into a refined gentleman, which mirrors his coming of age, and finishing up with how costume designer Eric Damon redefined on how to quote unquote dress like a man at a time where fashion for menswear was typically jeans that were skinny and a T. So let's get into it, shall we? Chuck sports foundationally a dapper style, but gently and aggressively pushes the envelope of class and modernity. Dapper style belongs to a person, traditionally a gentleman, of superb taste, who is neat and trim in appearance, all while being very spruce and stylish. Picture a man diligently attired in garments that accentuate his well-groomed physique, every detail from his perfectly tailored ensemble to his spotless grooming speaks volumes about his innate sense of style and panache. Particularly, dapper clothes typically evoke nostalgic and almost 60s vibes with a contemporary tone, have an old world aura to him, yet he is very ahead of the grain. With an intrinsic flair for fashion, he masterfully accessorizes his ensembles of exquisite, one-of-a-kind pieces that leave onlookers in awe. Whether it's a thoughtfully folded pocket square or an intricately designed timepiece, each accessory has been selected with care to reflect his already exemplary taste. With an air of competence, he naturally stands out from the crowd, captivating all of his classy, clever, and undeniably chic aesthetic, conjured up in menswear garments that are so unexpected. When you think of a bad boy, Chuck, though, he's really not one to play by the rules, and we see this through his actions, his personality, and of course his style. Much like men on television, especially during this time, he isn't dressed like everyone else. He knows how to capture the eye and command the room just by entering it. He's in a league of his own, taking his dapper concepts and meshing it with all American sensibilities, as well as avant-garde approaches. We see this through his brands of choice, such as the Brooks Brothers, and the Nana Republic, Tomeso Mugella, and Armoni. What I find the most inspirational about Chuck's style as a character is he has this very brazen nonchalance to him, which is very interesting because of course he does these preppy school looks, but also these very high fashion ones as well. And even for events, he's never doing that traditional tuxedo. He always has to do something a bit different, his own riff on the dress code. I think this is so nice because when I talk to clients who are men specifically, it's very hard for them to challenge those norms. And often when we see men break out of those norms, there's typically a point because men are judged quite harshly when they make a fashion faux pas and this isn't to say that women are not judged harshly as well it's just that women from a very young age we learn to nurture these different skill sets it's almost a societal expectation to know what works for you what doesn't how to put yourself together really have a bit more of an extreme example but i was learning how to color coordinate match patterns etc from a very early age and typically men who get into a fashion whether it be a personal interest for work etc 
they don't have this until later in life. So it's very daunting to make these tutorial risks when you don't know how they're going to work, how are people going to respond. So when Cha can walk in wearing the sweater of whales on them and everyone just doesn't bat an eye because it is just him, I think it's really a testament to how he's the sort of man who doesn't just wear fashion. He has a true style. He's just very comfortable in himself. And I wish I could pass that on to really everyone that I speak with because there's something so freeing about it. For example, in It's a Wonderful Lie season two. So he has this boyish devil may care charm still. He's in this gorgeous black and clear crystal beaded smoking jacket with a crisp classic button down and silver shadow striped bow tie rather than the classic black tuxedo many would think of as formal wear for men. Chuck simply goes all out. He doesn't have a care in the world about it. Or in Summer Kind of Wonderful, we see this coordination of flair which grows into a unison over time. You're interested in the style evolution of Blair Waldorf and delving into Queen Bee syndrome, style to the art of fashion, is available to watch now. But this is such a pivotal scene in terms of his design throughout the show. The three little words and the look has a lot to unpack from the color psychology, which holds much symbolism of growth and harmony, Damon wanting it to almost get lost in the atmosphere as if they could just stay in this one fairy tale moment forever together, but also green is very symbolic of jealousy. While Blair is far more saturated, Chuck is the one who's more muted, more soft, but most of the time he is very saturated and has very loud looks. Chuck and Blair have this light and dark side. They're always going on about it. It's such a big part of the narrative and it really mirrors cat string theory where they're very woven together. And this theory poses that the cats could first be interested in the wool, but will soon lose interest and the string will be pulled every which direction, which raises the question, are games necessary to keep love alive? A huge part of their storyline. And if you can envision those photos of lovers where they're binded by the red string, this cat string theory, it's everywhere. It's a big mess, it's all knotted. And how they are dressed really reflects where that string is and how tangled it is, where they are standing. And often sometimes we see them contrasting, we see them matching, we see them looking more light, we see them looking more dark. And it's styled very well. We have these very deep, rich hues as well as light pastel ones that show where each of them is standing. Another color that Chuck often is seen in is purple which is symbolic of wealth, extravagance, creativity, and wisdom, but is also related to inferiority and obsession to achieve. That Your dad wrote you a letter? You have to read it. Yeah, aren't you curious to know what it says? I think I can guess. You're a disappointment of a son. I'd die of embarrassment if I wasn't already. Why do you wear so much purple? He's specifically wearing purple when he's trying not to just follow in his father's footsteps, but rather surpass him or when he puts together a fashion show to help Blair admit his own expectations. He has a vision in his head of what success means to him, and he wants to create that. According to color theory, purple is the shadowy side that includes associations with sorrow, a need for intimacy, and repentance, despite its proximity to more romantic tones, such as pink or red, and being a complementary color to gold, which is Serena's signature. We really see this play out in their dynamics. But it's always not about color when it comes to fashion. He is one to often implement the contrast rule. So in terms of styling, this means different silhouettes, textures, degrees of formality, and even different fashions can all be used to create a striking contrast, which then in turn creates a higher visual dominance and appeal. Many people like Chuck in some sense will admit, I have this romantic side to me and this edgy side too. You have to stick to one style or follow the latest hottest trends. Instead, you can try out different looks and combinations that reflect who you are. The beauty lies in the individuality of each component. The trick is to keep your cool and find a happy medium between various elements. The balance may change from day to day, but in accepting those different sides of yourself, you learn how to create a cohesive look. Chuck, he has his own look. 
He is not boxed in, but a very liberated person. We see this so much in his mindset, as well as through how the outfits are put together and the styling techniques really mirror how he's feeling. Costume designer Eric Damon stated in an interview with Fashionista, when asked about his favorite character to dress, he states, quote, I feel like if there was really one to pick, I'd have to say it was Chuck Bass, because I feel like what we did for him, for menswear for him, how we dressed him and who he was, how he carried it all, was very pioneering in the menswear world. I think he relaunched menswear and being able to dress like a gentleman. It wasn't about jeans and t-shirts and being super sport guy. We took being masculine and made it okay to wear ascots and pink jackets and be flamboyant like a peacock, like men used to be. It wasn't seen as fey or dandy. I love that he really switched a button for men to dress better. It is lovely, even the menswear people would traditionally wear have that chuck bass spin on them from patterns like striped button downs and matching paisley ties and pocket squares to textures such as velvet jackets and patent loafers. Like I was saying before, for men to have their own style, they really need to perfect it. And when a man can stand out, put himself together and make it work, suddenly, even if people personally do not like this aesthetic, they view this man of more competence, respect, someone who is not a follower, someone who has their own mindset. And this is not to say that men who dress more traditionally or are not into fashion do not have this to them. It's just that anyone can go outside and you see women beautifully dressed and put together. When a man puts himself together, he just stands out from the crowd. He attracts so much attention. And having good style as a man is a game changer can literally change your life because people treat you differently, people see you differently. I was once talking to this businessman in his late 20s, so he is quite young, and he owns a media company. Often he goes golfing with men who are almost twice his age, and he made this decision, he was telling me how he had the choice to dress up like them and to try to fit in, or to be very modern and play into his youthful side, to show that there's something to him, something special, and that he doesn't want to look or be or own or act like anyone else. He's going to do this for himself and show he can be a team player to show that he can contribute something different, that he isn't trying to do what has been done and works, he's trying to create something new that works as well. Even though these men may be many years his senior, he chooses to show up just as himself, not to quote-unquote play how a man should be, how a man should look. He chooses to look more modern, to embrace this youthful side, to embrace his instincts which in turn makes him the man he wishes to appear as. Not just to wear something age appropriate, but cutting edge. To show there was something special to him, that he isn't going to do what everyone else is doing. That is his signature. The difference of a girl trying to dress as a woman or a boy trying to dress as a man and simply dressing as himself and in turn going from this girlhood into womanhood or boyhood into manhood is a rite of passage. If I knew his name, I'd hunt him down and kill him. What, because you kill people now? You're going to strangle him with your scarf? Don't mock the scarf, Nathaniel. It's my signature. <laughs> we also can't talk about Chuck without mentioning the signature scarf, which also was very symbolic of this boyish innocence he carries with him earlier on despite his lifestyle. As he matures, we do see the scarf slowly fade out, but the neck isn't left unadorned. We see this development into cravats. It's very common that we take pieces of our old selves, or ways we used to dress, fashions we used to like, within our style evolution, and conjure it up in a different way that retains the integrity of our style and ourselves, but allows us to step into a new chapter. Often people feel that they age out of specific looks. For example, I used to always wear knee high socks. I really enjoyed it and sometimes I still do, but I would wear them out and about all the time, had a uniform and so on. I decided to retain this part of my style into adulthood by starting to wear knee high boots. It still is very girly, it shows a bit of leg, but it's more mature. It's suited to the life I lead now. This is what you should do instead of feeling that you're 
aging out of your look because we hold on to past parts of ourselves, past styles, and it creates our style now. It isn't about becoming this cookie cutter version of what you see in a magazine or on social media, rather it's finding what is comfortable for you and the stylistic techniques that make you who you are. Not to step on any toes because obviously I'm a woman and can really only speak from women's experiences and I don't want to speak on anyone else's behalf, but I feel like oftentimes men, when they are younger, when they are boys, they feel this pressure to grow up and they are so blinded by societal expectations of how a man should look, how a man should act, how a man should be seen. And Chuck, he tries to live up to this initially. He feels this pressure from his father. He feels pressure from his friends. He wants to kind of be this bad boy and he's so blinded by his world, how lavish it is, the darkness of it. He wants to indulge. He wants to be very hedonistic. He doesn't believe in himself. He doesn't view himself as someone of a future. Rather, he's very much living in the moment and being very careless and reckless and quite a horrible person to be frank but we really see him grow out of this phase when he really starts to face himself to step out of his father's shadow according to psychology today in an article by Isel romeli focus on men's mental health he states quote we were taught not to be our authentic selves often men can suffer from what is called normative male alexithymia which is Quote, defined as a subclinical form of alexithymia found primarily in boys and men reared to conform to traditional masculine norms that emphasize toughness, teamwork, stoicism, and competition, discouraging the expression of vulnerable moments. Pressure often on Chuck, who feels he is weak in his father's eyes, he does not have his mother to turn to, and he often turns to substances, numbness and even at one point contemplate suicide. This is not to excuse his actions in any way, but clearly he is a boy suffering. What does this have to do with self-image? Well, our self-image is very much formed by our self-perception. How we dress and how we look appearing in the world is often confirmation bias of where we stand and it's shaped by external factors as well as our own internal drive. A study titled The Role of Masculine Norms and Informal Support on Mental Health states 11 masculine norms include risk-taking, disdain for homosexuality, violence, winning, emotional control, power over women, dominance, playboy, self-resilience, primacy of work, and pursuit of status. Chuck is almost like this caricature of all of those things. He's pushed to such an extreme, unlike Dan and Nate, who are very much rooted in their own personalities. We don't see them have these huge redemption arcs, rather they have a very fluid storyline. Chuck is again very extreme, and we see a glimpse of his real personality. He's secretly very kind person, he tries to help Nate and not tell him, he tries to help Blair and not tell her. It's almost like he's embarrassed of himself, and of course we see that a lot in his relationship with his father, where his father doesn't want him to be emotional and blinded by his feelings, and he tries to shut this all away and becomes this almost like monster of a person and i think when we see his style evolution from boy switch over becoming a man he begins to let go of those expectations and begins to redefine who he is and what he's looking towards what he will have in the future this is something a lot of people struggle with letting go of the past being defined by the past and having it almost weighed down on them. And at times a lot of people think, well, I dressed this way, I looked this way at one point in my life. What are people going to say? How will people react if I change? It's not about other people's reactions. It's about having the strength and courage to change for yourself, to better yourself and focus on that development. So I find what's really lovely about Chuck's style evolution is that he doesn't become this whole entire different person. He doesn't, you know, be like Jenny and have like preppy and then grunge. It's something more about finding himself amidst 
being blinded by society, blinded by his father, blinded by his friends, trying to be this cool bad boy and really fit in. When in reality, he is this boy who is so sensitive, this boy who is strong but soft, someone who is honorable and he is always closing the door on that until he finally decides to walk through it. And his looks do not change drastically, instead he refines them. As people grow, old pieces of their former self remain and are renewed, given new life, new meaning. As he matures, we begin to see more classical pieces in the mix. It's no longer so loud, but rather a quiet confidence as he comes into his own, as a man and steps out from his father's shadow, like the bright orange coat in contrast to the beige overcoat, paired with gloves. We still see that strength and leather, but it's more classy, it's more secure. He often tries to overcompensate his deeply rooted insecurities. He doesn't want to be seen as weak or broken. And unlike that quiet luxury approach that has grown in popularity these days, Chuck is the opposite. If you are interested in quiet luxury, I have done a Shiv Roy succession style analysis to explore the aesthetic. But Chuck, he likes to be extravagant, larger than life. Even when questioned about why he is deserving, he has a sharp wit to him, or simply replies with his catchphrase, I'm Chuck Bass, and wants people to see him as this powerful man. He goes from being this very crass, sleazy boy who secretly has a heart of gold, who's so influenced by the world he's in and thinks he can play God, to being this person who is honorable, who is respectful, who puts himself together and redefines what it is to be a man for himself rather than playing one and trying to be beyond his years in ways that he is not. He begins to really face himself, to look within, to challenge himself, to evolve into a person who is diligent, a person who is worthy of what he wants in life. His codes of dress, they are not dwindled down. We don't see the style evolution where he's experimenting with a lot of different looks, such as Jenny. I did cover her style in a previous video. Rather, he implements them with refinement to match his new lifestyle, goals, and values. Because as we know, fashion is an expression of political affinities, of our morals, of who we are internally, of our headspaces. My definition is to remove impurities, make small chances for further accuracy. He refines himself inside and out. He begins to make right his wrongs, to take responsibility for himself, such as trying to be a better person, to not shed away the dark or the light, but learn to accept himself as a multifaceted person. He reimagined for the public what it meant to quote unquote dress like a man by challenging these conventional norms of menswear and showing the strength of expression through fashion, even if it's not what everyone else is wearing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, like, turn on notifications and comment. Thank you so much for watching.